Hey YouTube, Jeff checking in. Today's video is all about Adobe stock. Now, as many of you in the microstock industry uh, know, um, myself and others, uh, Shutterstock has changed its earning structure and that's made life difficult for uh, Shutterstockers. Now, as a result, um, um, as, and as I mentioned in previous videos, I'm shifting away from Shutterstock and focusing my efforts uh, in other places. And one of the best uh, sites right now is Adobe Stock. And so I think a lot of you will also be considering Adobe Stock as a primary source for your stock images. And so that's why I want to do this video. Uh, I think there's uh, some techniques and uh, strategies for putting images on Adobe Stock that are unique to that site. And if you're aware of these strategies to make your uh, images uh, the most available and visible to potential buyers, then you'll do better on Adobe Stock and maybe uh, help um, you know offset some of the income that you've lost from Shutterstock. And if you're new uh, to Adobe Stock or any other Microstock uh, site, then this video will help you hopefully uh, with some tips on both uh, describing your images and also keywording your images. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, image descriptions. It's the shorter of the two topics, you know, as between descriptions and keywords. Uh, but it's it's pretty important to understand how descriptions work and um, the best strategies for putting together a solid description. Now, if you're if you're on Adobe Stock or you're thinking about it, the first thing you'll notice about their uh, their site is there's no place for titles. You just have a description field basically or you could call it a title field it's, it's a single block for describing your image the approach that you want to take is to be very brief in your description describe the image exactly as it is in as few words as you can describe this is not the time to write an essay or um, get into the weeds because uh, basically what happens is the buyer is searching the images visually and um, they're scrolling through a whole bunch. The, the description might not be available or visible beside the thumbnail on the search screen. Uh, and when they click on it, they're not looking to read a whole lot. Uh, they don't want to work that hard, right? They want to focus on their clients. So the image has to be... Um, made avail to the, available to them in the easiest manner possible. So when they click on that image, what they're going to do is they're going to look at the description primarily and almost solely for the purpose of confirming that the image is what they think they're looking at. So if they're looking for an image of a skyline of a particular city, like Calgary, um, that's my city, they want a skyline image of the city of Calgary, they don't want a whole bunch of description of, of what it is. They just want that confirmation. So it should say, you know, if it's taken at night, Calgary skyline taken at night. Just a simple, short description to quickly allow them to confirm the image is what they're looking at so that they can purchase that and move on to their client work. What they don't want to have is uh, a, a description that's, for example, you could describe an image, you know, like this, long exposure, nighttime photograph on a hill overlooking the urban core of the modern city of Calgary. Well, that's too long. They might have moved on already. So um, that's not a good description. And the other thing not to get carried away with, and I've seen this in many times, is people try to use the description as an alternative location for keywords. I mean, that's not a good idea, and it's, it's difficult for the buyer to sort of sort through and say, okay, well, which keyword applies to this image? Keep it simple, stupid. I think that applies to the description um, probably more so than the keywords. Okay, so that's descriptions uh, in a nutshell. Now with keywords, I'm going to start more broadly than just uh, Adobe Stock here and just make some uh, general comments on keywords, but then I'll get right into the weeds on Adobe, 
on Adobe Stock, and I'll let you know some of the things that are absolutely crucial to keywording. Um, and these could be uh, these tips are could be make or break as far as your images being found. And given the number of images that are on Microstock sites now, you actually you absolutely have to have your keywording done uh, correctly uh, and in a way that suits the uh, search engine that's being employed by the particular Microstock site. And this is really important because many people uh, will include their keywords in metadata and upload that way, and that's fine. Uh, but then you'll have to make sure that when you look at your, or you go to the specific Microstock site, that you're thinking about how the search engine for that site works. And you may have to do additional work to sort of fix that up and make sure you're, you're doing your uh, keywords in accordance with um, the search system that's operating behind the scenes at the specific site. So generally, uh, Microstock sites allow you to put in uh, a large number of keywords, I think mostly up to 50, but there might be some that allow more than 50 words. And then there's usually a minimum number. Um, five is a, is a typical kind of uh, minimum keyword uh, number. So basically you're looking at uh, five to 50 keywords that describe the image. And just because uh, there's a limit of 50 or more words, that doesn't necessarily mean 50 is uh, best. Uh, I think there's, some, there's a sweet spot in the industry, um, and this would go across sites for the most part, of between 15 and 25 words. You want to make sure you have at least 15 to give uh, the image a chance of being found by buyers. Uh, but more than 25, those, uh, those keywords beyond 25 down to 50, those are going to generally be um, less important. Okay, so what you want to do is describe the image very carefully. Make sure that the keywords accurately reflect what the subject of the image is. Keeping in mind that really only 15 to 25 words are going to be uh, valuable here, right? So, you know, if it's an image of a skyline, um, you just have to be focused on what potential buyers would keyword search to find those images. Now, one good way, if, you, if you're needing extra help or you, you're not sure where to go with a certain image, uh, one great tactic is to look at um, the site that you're, you're uploading to, the specific site, look at the top selling images that are roughly um, similar to the subject of your image, think about how you keyword search to find that, and then look at the keywords that they're using to sell their image. And, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, being inspired by or using the words, um, the keywords that you're seeing on those images. I think that's, that's perfectly legitimate, and I think probably most people do. Um, but for the most part, I mean, the, the core set of uh, keywords should be pretty obvious. The other thing I want to mention is just because um, you do only have a limited number of uh, real estate here for keywords, uh, only a limited number of options, you want to avoid doing things uh, that don't help, like using uh, words in multiple languages. If you're multilingual, you might want to you know, put in a word in French and English and German or Russian, whatever. Uh, translation is usually taken care of by the search engine behind uh, the machine or the, the site that you're using. So you're, you're just wasting your time by putting in uh, different languages. Use one. Um, I use English. Uh, the second thing that you don't want to do is many of the, many of the websites, include, and this is true of Adobe Stock, if, if it's not recognized in the vocabulary system that they have uh, to, uh, to allow you to, to keyword and allow buyers to find images, if it's not in their vocabulary, it won't show up. And so this really um, is relevant for misspelling words. If, if you are providing spelling, misspelling variants of keywords on Adobe, those misspelled variants won't show up. So, you know, if you think of uh, four different ways to spell skyscraper and you put in all four of those um, different variants, only the proper way of, 
of spelling skyscraper is going to show up in the search results. So, you know, forget those other options to spelling the words correctly. And if you don't know how to spell the word, look it up because you don't want to have a word spelled wrong in your keywords. Okay, and so the last thing that I just want to mention with Adobe Stock before uh, going on to the computer and uh, showing you some critical keywording uh, steps in Adobe Stock uh, is just with respect to compound terms, you want to make sure that if the term is a compound term, and by that I mean more than one word, like summer home, uh, you can think of uh, a bunch, uh, fishing boat, maybe. Uh, I just gotta make sure that they're not uh, single words. Uh, fishing boat, use the compound term. Don't split them up into two different words um, if that's the subject of your image. So summer home, just put summer home as one single keyword. Um, sometimes, you know, summer and home might be different keywords that apply to the image, but that's what the search engine wants. And it also will give you the opportunity to uh, get more uh, high quality keywords within uh, your um, 15 to 25 uh, keyword sweet space on, uh, on Adobe Stock. So keep that in mind as well. All right, now let's uh, go into Adobe Stock and uh, I'm gonna show you how to manage the keywords that you add for a single image. In Adobe Stock right now, and I just have a skyline image of Calgary selected here in my uploaded file, in my new uploaded file section. You can see that Adobe has added in uh, 25 keywords by or through artificial intelligence. That is the general standard that Adobe provides right now. If you upload an image, typically it will add 25 keywords. And your first step, if you remember, I mentioned that you need to have between 15 and 25 keywords. Uh, so you have to go through these and you have to delete the ones that do not apply. So very briefly, um, I can see that Montreal doesn't apply. Hong Kong definitely doesn't apply. Uh, Canada applies, Trees Park, uh, sorry, China, remove that. Um, the rest of these are actually pretty accurate. Uh, what's missing is probably Calgary, Alberta, Canada, that gets me up to 25. Uh, then I might want summer. It's not a very accurate keyword, but uh, it provides the season in which the image is taken. So for a prospective buyer that is looking for seasonal type images, and in Canada, that's pretty important because, you know, half the year is uh, water skiing season and the other half is uh, snow skiing season. So um, I like to put in seasonal keywords. Now, I'm back up to 20 keywords. Now, here's the critical point, and hopefully you've stayed with me this long. Um, you'll notice that these first five keywords have uh, color coding on the left-hand side beside each one. These are the five most important keywords in respect to this image. So you have to make sure that your most five critical keywords are included here. And when you think about that, that really drives your mental process towards putting in a, a great um, set of keywords. And so when I'm looking at this right now, I'm seeing that these are not the best keywords for me to be at the top. Skyline's great, cities, cityscape is great, downtown, that all works, but I definitely need Calgary. Um, so that's a start to getting these keywords in order. Now, the second thing that you won't know uh, is six and seven are almost as important as the first five. So your keywords six to seven are your crucial keywords here. After seven, um, 
the value of the keywords is actually quite a bit lower than the first uh, five and the first seven, really. So as you drop off, then after six or six and down, the keywords lose their value, uh, the lower the rank or the lower the number on the side. So do your best to make sure that you've at least got your first seven keywords as your best seven keywords. If you get those, then your image has a chance. Make sure your top 15, you know, after that, make sure your top 15 has got your best as well. In this image, I think uh, I would actually add a little bit here uh, and I would not stick with this necessarily, um, but that's the way um, Adobe stock works. Okay, and the, the one thing I did wanna show you as well in case uh, you weren't aware of this, you can click and uh, drag these around to order them. So if architecture is not number six, then drop it down. If skyscraper is up, and then you can just click and drag it around. It makes it pretty easy to um, sort out the keywords. And also these buttons on the left, these, uh, or sorry, the right, if you click this, uh, it just shoots it up to the very top, um, which is a bit of a blunt instrument, but uh, generally you want to just click and drag to sort the images into the into the categories you want, just to make sure you get the top category or the top keywords correct. So, you know, in summary, make sure you have 15 to 25 keywords. Make sure these five keywords are populated with your best images. Make sure six and seven all are also very important keywords. And then, you know, it's less important, but make sure you get in uh, a good 25 after that. However, if it is editorial content, uh, often these uh, AI keywords will not show up. So I've already keyworded this so it won't go, but if I select another image and I click illustrative editorial content, the keywords will disappear. And you can either refresh your keywords or you can start from scratch and just use your own editorial keywords. Um, but again, the same rule applies. You'll see that these uh, circles are all colored um, from the dark blue to the lighter blue, and these are your key keywords, your most important keywords, and uh, 15 to 25 is again the sweet spot for putting in uh, your images. If you're not doing this, if you're doing alphabetical and not sorting your best keywords at least into the first seven spots in this section, then your images will not show up to buyers the way you want them to, unless by fluke your, you know, subject keywords, if by some miracle alphabetical works, I can't imagine that situation, maybe if it's an apple, but otherwise you're, you're not gonna get image sales um, if you go by alphabetical. All right, so uh, hopefully uh, this was helpful and um, I really do hope this helps you uh, improve your keywording on Adobe. And if you found this helpful, if you learned something new, subscribe to my channel and please like this video. There'll be lots more Microsoft uh, content coming in the future and uh, it would help my channel grow and I'd uh, really appreciate that, you know, particularly when I'm giving you information to help you beat me at the Microsoft game. Anyway, yeah, like I said, hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.